In this video, we're gonna be talking about something I've talked about on the channel before, but surprisingly not in a huge amount of detail, and that is decks. Decks are part of the collections module, so I would have talked about them a little bit, maybe like two years ago or something, but they are actually really useful. They have a lot of cool features. They're incredibly performant, especially in pop and insert operations that I'm gonna be showing you later. And they really are something you need to know if you're going to master Python. The performance isn't the only thing I wanna focus on today though. Uh, I wanna take you on a little bit of a tour of decks, kind of show you what they do, how they work. They are very similar to lists in a lot of ways, but you can append to and pop to the left as well as the right. And it also has a few nice little extra features that I want to show you as well. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can become either a member or a patron by using the information in the description below. But with that out of the way, let's finally talk about Dex. Before we start, a few things. So I've got a whole new setup. I've got a new microphone, a new way of recording. So hopefully everything sounds okay, fingers crossed. Second thing, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts. I've been ill over the last week and a bit, and I've still got a bit of a cough, so sorry about that. But before we get into the actual your meat of the video in terms of the title, I want to show you how Dex work and a few cool little features with Dex. So Dex um, are short, and yes, they are pronounced like that, short for double-ended Q. And what that means is that you can append to either the left or the right and pop from the left or the right. Uh, so if we do from collections import, import, there we go, deck. And if we use our run guard, uh, we could do fruits, as an example, is a deck, say, of an empty list. And then, yeah, it can take any collection. Uh, MyPy is going to complain because when you do this, it says it needs a type annotation. So we're going to give it one. You could just do a deck string like that because we're just going to have a series of fruits. And you could say append uh, fruits. Well, actually, let's let's give it some. Let's give it apple and orange and a banana. And say fruits.append. Let's use a tomato as an example. Not typically considered a fruit, but technically is one. But you can also do friend fruits.append left, say mango and append it to the left of the list as well. And then if you were to print fruits as it currently stands, you would get a uh, mango, apple, orange, banana, and tomato. Apple, orange, and banana were what we started out with. And then mango is what we appended to the left. And tomato is what we appended to the right, which is the default. You can also pop from the left and the right. So if you do fruits.pop, actually if I do print, uh, and then pop left, and then print fruits. You'll see that we uh, pop from the right by default, so we get tomato. We pop left, we get a mango, and then we can see that we are left with our original deck. Much like lists, you can also remove things. So if we wanted to do fruits.remove apple, we could. We can also del uh, or delete items from the list. So if we wanted to delete orange, we could do that. If we then bring back fruits, we can see that we just have a deck of banana left. The one thing we can't do is we can't pop at a specific index. So if you were to do fruits.pop again, we can see that it doesn't take any arguments. And this is what I want to talk about later, because decks actually have a much more efficient way to do that than you know something like lists do. We'll talk about that in a bit, because I first want to show how I found out about decks to begin with. And that is the max len property, which can turn out to be quite helpful. So if I create a new file, maxlen.py from collections, import deck like that. Uh, do the run guards. It's always good practice. There we go. And then we create a new deck. Um, not called that. Say belt. Uh, and then we have a deck. That's an empty list. Let's say, well, let's say an empty tuple. Let's mix it up. And we could do a max len of say five, we'll say five. And this means that the deck can only be um, five elements long. If I just give it its type in there to get my pie to shut up. So what this means is that when you append to the deck, if the deck is already five elements in length, length you'll get a pop left effect. If you append to the left, you'll get a pop effect if it's already at five elements. And this is particularly useful in certain situations. One that I'm going to show you today is about simulating a conveyor belt. So conveyor belts are only so long. 
So if we had a series of components, so that was just a list A, B, uh, if I could type and X and do from random import choice. And if we say for I, well, it's just an underscore in range 50, we then choose uh, to append a choice of components like that. And if we print the belt, uh, it's called max len this one. We can see that the length of the deck never exceeds five. So if we go up here, we start, oh my God, it did three A's in a row. That's interesting, uh, random generation. You see it's element one, we have two elements, three elements, four elements, five elements, and now it has five elements, it can't exceed that. So when it adds this extra B, you'll see this series of three A's becomes the series of two A's because this A has been taken off the end of the belt. Um, and when I say it's a pop left behavior, I don't believe it returns uh, the value that's been popped, though we could always check, I suppose, because I genuinely don't know. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's not a pop left. It's more like a delete off the, uh, off the deck. And the reason it's able to do all this, including being able to pop left, pop right, append left, append right, uh, feeds very nicely into why decks are so much faster than lists when it comes to popping and inserting. It's because of the way that decks operate. So lists hold all their values sequentially in memory. So say if the first element of a list was in uh, memory address zero, the next element will always be memory address one, the element after that would always be memory address two, etc., 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 until you get to the end of the list. With DEX, that's not true. DEX have their elements spread all over the place and they're connected by a series of pointers. Anyone that knows what a linked list is, you've got the right idea. Now, the difference is here is that when a list um, pops an element, let's say element number two, all of the elements after it have to be shifted over in memory which is a very expensive operation. When decks do it, all they have to do is update the pointers. So the one preceding and the one after uh, both point to each other instead of the one that was popped. Now, I'm not 100% sure why exactly this is, but that means that you can only pop from the left and the right, despite the fact that you can delete from anywhere. So if you were to pop an element by its index, you would need to rotate it first. And this is going to seem somewhat unnecessary and it's going to seem like it's a lot slower than doing it by list. But while I'm doing this, remember that it is genuinely faster and I'm going to prove it. Uh, so if we have our run guard in here. And then we have our fruit, you know, I'm just going to copy paste this. I don't particularly want to type it out all over again. And say if we wanted to get the second element, we could do, if we didn't want to remove it, we could do something like this um, and it would get orange. But if we wanted to pop it, what we would need to do is we need to do fruits.rotate minus the index. Uh, and then we can print fruits. Uh, you don't need to print it. We just want to show that it is um, popping the correct element. And then if we wanted to restore the original order that we would need to return the deck back um, by giving it the same index again. And if we print fruits, we can see that if I oh, just run the file again, we can see that we get orange. So we printed orange again, but we're popping orange the second time round, And our deck is in the same order as it was, you know, just without the orange. So we have mango, apple, banana. If we were to follow this, it'd be mango, apple, and banana. The orange isn't there. So this is a three line operation to perform a pop. But if I were to go into our benchmarks and do benchmark pop, this is a particularly weird and complicated thing, but it is programmed properly. So two very important things before I run these. One, the collection being used is quite large, 250,000 in this case. Obviously the effects or the performance difference is going to be reduced on a smaller collection. The second thing to keep in mind is that due to the way the benchmark is programmed, there are always 250 pop operations for both the list and the deck. And then the list and the deck, I don't think it would matter in this case, but they have exactly the same numbers. You know, the deck is just created through the numbers list. So if we were to run by benchmarks and then benchmarks pop, we will see that decks are an awful lot faster. And you'll also see something quite strange in that decks get slower, or as decks get slower, lists actually get slightly faster. And that's because the further along the list you have to go, 
the less items you have to move into place. So if you had a list that was 100 elements long, if you pop the second thing, you would have to move the other 97 elements across. If you pop the 98th thing, you'd only need to pop two. Um, or you'd only need to move two, sorry, not pop. So that's why lists uh, speed up over time. But even in the deck's worst case, it's still significantly faster than a list. The effect is actually even more pronounced if you do insert. So I will show the benchmark off very quick. It's just the same thing. We're just inserting the number into the particular position. And you would do your rotate uh, and append left. Or you could append right if you wanted to. But you'd need to do some extra maths on the number uh, to get it in the right place. And you'll be able to see that the effect is actually even greater with inserts than it is with pops. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this is. I guess insertion operations are more complicated than pop operations, but everything is having to be moved out of the way before something can be inserted in a list. With a deck, you're just saying, all right, this points to this and this points to this. And this final thing here for index 25,000, so this will be the absolute final element of the list. So even when there's nothing to move, lists are still quite a bit slower than their deck counterparts. Um, I don't know why that is, but that's true. If we then run the append benchmarks, We'll see, this is a slightly weirder benchmark, um, but lists are actually faster when it comes to append. So if you're only ever gonna be appending stuff to the right of the collection, then lists may be the way to go. But in pretty much any other situation, decks are faster. But yeah, you know, that's everything I wanted to discuss with decks. If you have any questions about what you've seen or any ideas or videos you want me to do in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I'd also like to thank my amazing members and patrons on screen now for their support, especially Mazard Rushman III for being so generous. And I will see you in the next video where we learn how to create Jupyter notebooks. So I've talked a little bit on the channel about that before, a good number of years ago. But I'm going to do an updated one for those just getting into data science for the first time. So I'll see you for that.